Christian persecution at that time was severe and even today is continuing. But the good news is our God is with us. Amen. And in today's video, I will continue reading from this amazing book called Life in the Combat Zone by Rick Renner. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I'll link it somewhere up here and down below in the description box. So make sure you check that out. Now let's get started with today's video. Hey you all and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining and welcome. My name is Ragini and I do upload faith-based videos twice a week. So if you're one of those who loves hearing the word of God, please do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel. That way this channel will grow and reach out to many people as it can. So once again, in today's video, I'm going to continue reading from this book. I highly recommend you all to follow my previous videos to know the context as well as the review about this book and where we started from chapter one. And in my previous video, I discussed with you about the Imperial Nero in Rome and how he was, how evil he was and how it was affecting his own family and people in general at that time and also Christian persecution. And in today's video, I'll continue reading from chapter one, page 22. Just in case, if you also have this book, please open with me page number 22. And the title is The Great Fire of Rome. Although there are always scholars to debate the facts, notable early historians report that Nero ordered his servants to set fire to the city of Rome to clear the way for him to construct a new palace because he was so selfish that he wanted to construct a new palace in Rome city. So he told his servants to go and set out fire over there. And later on what he does, he realizes that those people in those cities, the slaves whose houses were burned, monuments were burned, then he says that now, before he gets executed for his crimes and everything, he wants to blame everything on Christians so that he won't get caught. And he wanted to change the entire subject by throwing at all the blames on the Christians and persecuting them, saying that they are the one who set the fire. See what he says over here. However, as popular as these actions were with the people, Nero's calculated philanthropy was not enough to satiate Rome. In fact, his reputation was worsening at a drastic rate because of the rumor that was circulating through every corner of the city that Nero himself had been responsible for the blaze or the fire. This news was already going around that he was the reason. And it says over here, to make matters worse, Nero soon began construction on a massive palace directly in the center of the city in an area cleared by the fire complete with lush gardens and 120 foot tall statue of himself in the courtyard. He was so, so desperate to build this palace in the city. And what he did in the middle of the fire and people losing their lives and their houses and everything, he's building his own big statue, 120 foot tall statue of himself in the courtyard. Although Nero also spearheaded building projects in the wake of the fire, that were beneficial to the city, this particular project seemed very fishy for those people, of course, and selfish in the eyes of many, and only exacerbated his guilt in the eyes of the people, because people were in shock that everything is happening, and he might be the reason behind this, because this was his main goal. We see over here, with accusations abounding, the emperor felt his grasp on the throne slipping. It seemed inevitable that unless something drastic occurred, he would soon be tried, convicted and executed for his crimes. He knew that people are now doubting that he's the reason and everything. So now he's coming up with a plan because he knew that he would get caught for his crime. He would place the blame for the fire entirely on the shoulders of an obscure religious sect that had recently come to prominence in Rome, the Christians. Sadly, Nero's scheme was very effective. In the years leading up to the Great Fire, Christians had become unpopular among, among the people of Rome for a variety of reasons. Therefore, when Nero made his public proclamation damning Christians as the chief arsonists, Rome took up the battle cry and attention quickly shifted from him. As he started using and blaming Christians for the blaze and fire in the city, Automatically, the society and all these people started looking 
towards the Christians that hey it could be them because Christians at that time they were not following the laws traditions and rules and regulations but they were saved by the grace of God they were full of the Holy Spirit and doing what God was leading them to do angry and desperate the people of Rome lashed out against Nero's scapegoat and Roman authorities began to round up Christians so they could be punished for their supposed crimes which they didn't even do persecution against followers of Jesus had officially begun in force. So if you're wondering if persecution has started now, no, it started then. Of course, we know that the disciples went through all that as well. But it was there and it is still here today because in most of the parts of the world, like in India and China and all, people are being burned and they're being bitten and they're being killed and the church is being burned just because of their faith in our Lord Jesus. And the Bible tells that the, that's the work of the devil because the God of this world the small letter G God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe in the gospel of Christ. And the Bible in context says the God of the world is the devil, but the God of overall universe and heaven and everything is our heavenly father. Amen. There's a difference. That's why it's important to read the Bible in its context. Persecution against followers of Jesus had officially begun in force. This tragic time would, would leave an indelible mark on the church and would usher in a period of periodic, intense persecution that would literally spend centuries and haunt believers until eventual collapse of Rome paganism in the 4th century. That's very shocking and that's very sad that this guy, this emperor of Rome, Nero, so selfish, full of pride, full of evil, and we know that the enemy was using him for everything. At the end of the day, he throws out everything on Christians that they are the one who set the fire while it was his main intention of building his own palace and his own statue in the middle of the courtyard. So persecution was there before and is still here today. The Bible says that all who live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. All of them who follows him and loves him will be persecuted. But the good thing is the Holy Spirit is with us and he will lead us and guide us what to speak, what not to speak and to give us the strength when it comes to do what he wants us to do for his glory. Amen. My request for you all is to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ in different parts of the world who are being persecuted just for their faith in following our Lord and our Savior Jesus because he's the only way, truth and life. Amen. In my next video, I'll continue reading from this book, page 24, which says, Why Blame Christians? And this, this is going to be also a very interesting topic. So make sure you're subscribed. That way you will get notified on time. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'll see you all in my next one. Until then, you guys take care. God bless you all and always stay rooted in Christ. Bye.